Hello and thanks for watching. I had hoped to uh, get out and about and do some more uh, varied video, shall we say. Uh, but I'm afraid that just hasn't happened. So uh, in the meantime, I've got for you today another uh, video for the Drake Low playlist. Uh, this time it's covering a visit by the BBC's Michael Colley in 2004. Um, I just wanted to say that I think the, the sort of underlying theme, the, the angle, uh, is a little bit convoluted in this. We're talking a bit about, um, or quite a bit really, about decay and how much decay is, is a problem. It was, it was a bit sort of exaggerated really, um, but it was just the case that, uh, as I recall, Michael wanted a, a sort of a strong angle, shall we say, for the uh, article. So just bear that in mind that uh, things at the time really weren't as bad as perhaps we were trying to make out there. But uh, anyway, here you go. Here's Michael Colley's visit in 2004. From the outside, this is just about all you see. From the inside, this is all you see until the oil power generator flips into action, bringing power to some of the three and a half miles of corridors under the Worcestershire countryside. Built by the government in 1941, Rover made aircraft engines here. In the early 60s, it became the emergency government centre for the Midlands, ready to house 350 people. It spans a huge um, area of our history. Uh, you've got uh, right from World War II, right through the Cold War, up until uh, present day. In the 1980s, Margaret Thatcher's government refurbished part of the tunnels, ready for a nuclear strike on Britain. But times have changed, and now these historic tunnels are decaying. This is presumably what you're up against? Yeah, this is typical. Uh, because we no longer have mains power available, the uh, dehumidifiers that used to take care of the damp can no longer work. And now it's just, it's literally uh, it's flaking away, isn't it? They are coming up, I mean, coming apart my hands. Just turns back to sand. Decay is evident everywhere. Income from 2,500 visitors a year helps, but it's not enough and soon these tunnels may have to shut forever. I have to say, coming here has been a bizarre experience. Three and a half miles of tunnels and work areas all ready to be used if ever Britain was hit in a nuclear attack. The tragedy, surely, is that although this place survived World War II and the Cold War, it's now being destroyed by nature. Michael Colley, BBC Midlands Today, under somewhere near Kidderminster. One thing that uh, Michael noted when he was there was that our BBC studio was, was empty. Uh, and this happened to be at about the same time as the BBC were actually vacating Pebble Mill. And he said to me at the time that there may well be uh, a, a considerable amount of surplus items at Pebble Mill and he'd make inquiries for us if there was anything we could have. And true to his word, he did so. I got a phone call again, sort of, and probably just a few days later from uh, somebody at the BBC um, and they said that Michael had organised some uh, items for us uh, if we could arrange to collect them but we had to collect them pretty quickly because um, it, the, the BBC's Pebble Mill was in its very last days and was almost stripped out and ready to go so I headed off into Birmingham uh, went into uh, Pebble Mill I'd been there for uh, radio interviews a couple of times before but it was shocking to see that when I got there there was a guy on a stepladder removing the BBC sign from behind reception. But indeed, I met up with an engineer who uh, had this mixing desk for us, um, which allegedly was one from Drake Low. Um, I'll try and find you a picture of it. Now, um, I did a fair bit of research on this and uh, you know, consulting with others uh, who really knew what they were talking about. And it would appear that this, this wasn't really the correct desk for the studio at the time. It was also very big and heavy. And it was awkward to uh, take it in each day or each time for uh, tours. So it actually never went down to Drake Low. Uh, but some years later, um, I was invited by Rod, who owns the uh, bunker at Hack Green near Nantwich, to come along with him and some other guys to uh, BBC Radio Shropshire, because they too were having a clear out and Rod had arranged that we could have some of the equipment uh, from there. So I think it was Peter, Roger and myself, might have been Ian as well, can't remember, trooped over with a, I think we took a Land Rover and trailer actually, and uh, came back with a load of stuff, 
which again, to be quite honest with you, isn't exactly the right gear for the studio, but we had nothing in there at all. So we thought it looked, uh, it looked pretty good when it was finished. Um, I'll try and find you a photo as well of what the studio actually should have looked like. I think there's a photo somewhere around of uh, Draco's BBC studio for the 1980s. So anyway, there you go. That's it for today's video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it was interesting. Uh, so I'm, I really will try and get out and about and do something a little more varied. But for now, this one obviously is for the uh, Draco play playlist. So thanks for watching. See you again soon. Cheers.